want to find the channel on YouTube, it's Mr. Here's Chemistry Lecture Series. On it, you will find experiments for CXC, right? And so also the started teaching organic chemistry as well on it. All right, so I'm going to begin now. Just to note, is anyone in here at the moment that hasn't started organic chemistry? Anyone in here hasn't started? All right. All right, good. So let's just recap, all right? I'm going to start off with the four whole molecule series in organic chemistry. So anyone want to start it off? What are some whole molecule series in organic chemistry that you know of? Let me put one. All right, here is someone is about to answer. Sir, alkene. Alkene, so we are looking at the whole molecules series, All right? One of them is alkene. Any more that, that you know of? Alkene. Alkene. Any more? Alkaloid acid. Right. So, all right, it's so carboxylic acid, but it can also be called as rayon or pointed out alkaloid acid, right? But it's more commonly, we call it carboxylic acid. One more. I'm looking for one more. Alcohol. That is correct. And so the four whole molecule series that we're interested in at this level, alkane, alkene, carboxylic acid, and alcohol. Right? So if these are considered whole molecule series, right? You know the periodic table, right? When you have group one, group two, group three, and in each group, we have particular elements, right? So let's say we're looking at group one of the periodic table. Any element in group one has certain characteristics, right? So for example, if you are in group one, we know that you only have one electron on the valence shell, right? We know that group one metals are very reactive. We know that group one elements are metals. So the whole molecular series for organic chemistry is like the periodic table, particular groups, right? That means for each whole molecular series, any compound that falls within a particular whole molecular series must have something in common, all right? So compounds in a particular whole molecular series have certain things in common, all right? I'm going to erase these and put what they should have in common. So these are the four whole molecular series that we look at for our organic chemistry. And our whole molecular series it refers to group of compounds that have the same. I'm just going to put a colon there. So compounds that are in the same whole molecular series, they must have the same general formula. Right, they must have the same functional group. Right, and they have the same chemical properties. Right, so if you're asked to define a whole molecular series, just remember it's a group of compounds, right, that have certain things in common. 
What are those things in common? At least remember that they have the same general formula and functional group, right? So formula we see is if I had to define it, it's just a group of compounds, right? That have the same, and if you remember these three, that is good, right? General formula, functional group, and the chemical properties. That means if a compound is an alkane, any compound that is an alkane will have the same general formula, functional group, and chemical properties, right? So now I'm going to look at the general formula and the functional group, all right? So first I'm going to look at the functional group. If I just come in, this is being recorded and I'm going to upload it. So if I erase it, it will be there for you to check again. So the four O molecule series, alkene, alkene, alcohol, and carboxylic acid. All right. So the functional group, I'm going to talk about the functional group first. The functional group is what we use to identify our homologous series are to place a particular compound in the correct homologous series, all right? Now we know that organic chemistry is basically the chemistry of carbon compounds. So the major element in organic chemistry is carbon, right? The next one is hydrogen and then oxygen. But in each of these homologous series, they consist of carbon atoms connected to each other, right? So how do we determine when we have an organic compound, if it belongs to alkane, alkene, alcohol, or carboxylic acid, right? So let's look at it. Now in organic chemistry, we have different ways of writing the formula of compounds. So before, our, before our organic chemistry, if I ask you for the formula for sodium chloride, you would just put like NaCl, aluminum chloride, AlCl3, right? But in organic chemistry, we have three ways of writing a formula, or three types of formula, right? So we have molecular formula, condensed formula, and structural, right? And I'm going to show you three of them. But before we look at the three types of formula, I'm going to show you how to identify each group. So the carbon atoms in any compound are connected to each other, right? So now, to show that a carbon atom is connected to a next one, you are going to draw a horizontal line, right? This line, it represents a bond, all right? So in organic chemistry, to show that this carbon is bonded to the next one, we place a horizontal line in between the two of them. So that means that this carbon atom is bonded to this one, all right? So let's say we have a compound with four carbons. Let's say we have a compound with four carbon atoms, right? And all of them are connected together by single bonds. So a single line, these single lines, we know that they are called single bonds, right? So each dash is a bond. And because it's just one bond, we say it is a single bond, all right? So if you, have a, if you have an organic compound 
and it only consists of carbon to carbon single bonds, then it belongs to alkene, right? So if you see any compound with a carbon to carbon, with only carbon to carbon single bonds, we know it belongs to alkene. So the functional group is what we use to identify our whole modular series. So in this case, for it to be an alkene, it must only consist of carbon to carbon single bond. Now look, let's look at this one now. All right. This compound, it consists of carbon to carbon single bond, right? But you notice this one, it has two lines. So when it has two lines, that is a double bond. So a single line, it's a single bond. Two lines, it's a double bond. Now, once your compound, once your compound as in a double bond, we cannot categorize it as an alkene. The alkane, it must only have carbon to carbon, single bonds all the way through. Once you see a double bond, that is an alkene. So the carbon to carbon double bond, this right here, this is what they use to tell that it is an alkene. Once you see it, even though you see carbon to carbon single bond here, that does not make it an alkene anymore. Once you have carbon to carbon double bond, this is what makes it an alkene. So this is the functional group. This is what we use to identify a compound as being an alkene. So the functional group for alkene is carbon to carbon double bond, all right? The compound must only consist of carbon to carbon single bond for it to be an alkene. Once you see a double bond, that is an alkene. Remember each line is a bond, one line, single bond, two lines, double bond, right? Now, if you have a compound, right, and you see OH, so remember before this compound, we said it was an alkene. The only difference now is that on this carbon, we have an OH group, right? So remember, these lines that are being drawn, they are bonds. So this means that the OH group is bonded to this carbon. Now, once you spot the OH group, it is no longer an alkene. Once you see an OH group in the compound, that makes it alcohol. So the OH group is what we use to identify the alcohol or modular series. So remember, once you see a double bond, that makes it an alkene. Once you see an OH group, that makes it an alcohol. All of your compounds will consist of carbon to carbon single bonds. However, once you spot at least one double bond, it's no longer an alkene, it's an alkene. If you see an OH group, it's no longer an alkene because OH means it is an alcohol. So these are the functional groups. This one is for alkene, alkene and alcohol. Now the final one is carboxylic acid or alkanoic acid, all right? So let's look at the carboxylic acid. And as I said before, every compound has carbon to carbon single bonds. We are looking at a specific group of atoms only. So for the carboxylic acid, the carbon at the end, right? I'm going to put it in blue. If you get a compound and the carbon at the end has a double bond, 
to an oxygen atom and a single bond to an OH group. Now, let me just draw back an alcohol over here. Remember, for the compound to be an alcohol, it must just have an OH group, not an OH and C double bond O, all right? All of this group here, all of this, is what makes the compound a carboxylic acid. The carbon at the end, it is bonded to an OH group and two bonds to an oxygen atom. So this is the functional group for our carboxylic acid. All right, let me just erase this. So C, and it is written COOH, all right? So when you're, if you're asked for the functional group for carboxylic acid, you just write COOH. But when you're drawing it now in a structure, it is C, double bond O, then a single bond to an OH group, all right? So functional, so the two things, because we're just starting out with the basics, all right? The whole molecular series, whenever you hear whole molecular series, it is referring to the names alkane, alkene, alcohol, and carboxylic acid. Functional group is what you are using to identify the whole molecular series, which is, if it's alkane, it's carbon to carbon, single bond, alkene, carbon to carbon, double bond, alcohol. Alcohol is the OH group, and then the carboxylic acid is COOH, all right? So homologous series, functional group. The next thing we need to be able to use is what we call a general formula. So I'm going to show you now how to use that. Remember, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. So now I'm going to show you the general formula. All right. So let's, I'm going to put a compound on the board first and show you how to use it. So let's say we have C5H12, right? That's the molecular formula. We want to know if this compound, just by looking at it, if it's an alkane, alkene, alcohol, or carboxylic acid. Now, by looking at the functional group, right? We know that carboxylic acid must have been oxygen, alcohol must have been oxygen. And clearly, this compound does not have in oxygen. So it could not be alcohol or carboxylic acid. That means it must be an alkane or an alkene because alkane and alkene, they are made up of carbon and hydrogen only. So the compounds, the structures I've been drawing earlier, I haven't put on the hydrogen. I haven't put on any hydrogen as yet. I'm going to do that afterwards, all right? So I'm going to show you how to use the general formula now. Let's say we have a the compound, right? C5. For the alkane, the general formula is Cn, H2n, plus two. So for alkane, it is CN, H2N plus two, all right? N is equal to the number of carbon atoms. I'm going to erase H12, all right? So N in our general formula here, it's the amount of carbon atoms. So if we have a compound with five carbon, Following this general formula here, let us see how many hydrogens it should have. 
So remember, N is the amount of carbon atoms. And the compound, the example we're using is 5 carbon. So your general formula for the alkene, it would be C5, H, 2, 2N, so 2 times 5 plus 2. All right? So 2, 5, 10, 10 plus 2 is 12. So, any, so an alkene with 5 carbon must have 12 hydrogens. So any amount of carbon you have, to get the amount of hydrogen, multiply it by 2, then you add 2. So if you have 5 carbons, 5 times 2 is 10. 10 and 2 is 12. Let's do an next example. So it will be C5. H12. All right. Let's do one where we have C4. All right. Let me carry this over. So we we'll say C5 H2 times 5 plus 2. So you get C5 H12. Let's do a next one. C4. If you have C4, again, H, and the amount of carbon atom you have, you multiply it by two. So two times four. And then you must also add two, right? So two times four, that is eight. Eight and two is 10. So we get C4, H, 10. Anybody have any question? Are we good? Any question? All right. No, sir. All right. So that's it for general formula. For the alkene. For the alkene, it's CN, H2N. So there is no plus two. So for our alkene, it is just CN, H2N, all right? So let's do it now with the alkene. If it was an alkene, we would not have plus two, all right? That means it would just be two times four. So for the alkene, any amount of carbon that is present, you must have twice the amount of hydrogen. So if you have four carbons, two fours, eight, so the alkene, the only difference between the alkene and the alkane is that for the alkene, you just multiply the amount of carbon atoms that you have by two. But for the alkane, after you multiply it by two, you have to add two. So for the alkene, it is C4, H8. But for the alkane, it is C4, H10. So this is the alkene, and this is the alkene. All right, so that is how you use the general formula for the alkene. Now all general formulas, they start with CN, H2N. All of them have this, right? In the case of the alkene, we add plus two. For the alkene, it's just C N H 2 N. Let's do one now for the alcohol. For those of you who are just coming in, it's being recorded. So you don't have to worry about me erasing it. You can just watch it back afterwards. I'm going to upload it to the channel. All right, so let's do alcohol now. Alcohol is C N. As I said, all of them start with CNH2N. For the alcohol, you will add plus one. All right, so it's CNH2N plus one. Then you will add back the functional group. So let's work an example. Let's say we have three carbons. Two, remember, any amount of carbons, right? So 
2 times 3 plus 1. How many hydrogen is this? Somebody can tell me? 7. Right. Seven. So it would be C3, H7, then the functional group that is correct, right? So it is C3, H7, OH. Let's try the next one. How about if we have two carbons? Can you tell me the formula if it's two? H5. Right. So it would be H. O H. Two times two plus one. O H. All right. Just a second. O H. Right. So two two is four. Four and one is five. So that person is correct. C two H five O H. Right. So that's how you use the general formula for alcohol. And it's not difficult to remember. Just remember, all of them start with CNH2N. For the alkane, you will add two. For the alkene, you will not add anything. For the alcohol, it's just plus one and the functional group. And for the carboxylic acid, it will be just like the alcohol. CNH2N plus one and the functional group. So I'm going to do the carboxylic acid now. So it will be plus one COOH. All right. I'm going to put one and let, let me see who can read it. So C3. Let me see. Can anybody tell me the formula if you have C3? H seven C O O H C three H seven C O O H. So let's check. Number of carbon is three, so it will be H two times three plus one. Two three six six and one is seven. So it's C three H seven, and then I write what the functional group. All right. So that is how you use the general formula. All right. After this now, I'm going to show you how to name the compounds, right? The basic naming of them first. So that is what we are moving on to. So, so far, we're starting from the front, right? So we looked at the whole model series, looked at functional group, and now we have looked at the general formula and how to use them, all right? These questions will can come on the exam. There were one or two marks. I don't want to give them away because it is really easy. Just remember the whole modular series, their functional group, and their general formula. All right. So let's look at how we name them. All right. So when you're going to name an organic compound, right? The name of it, it has two parts. All right, one part of the name tells you how many carbon atoms are present, and the next one tells you which functional group it belongs to. So when we're naming it, right, it has two parts. So the first part of the name tells us the number of carbon atoms, all right? And the second part tells us the homologous series, all right? First part, Number of carbon atoms, second part, the whole molecular series, right? So let us start. If it's an alkane, I'm going to deal with the end part of the name. If it's an alkane, the, name, the second part of the name, it will end in ane. 
right? The alkene, it will end in in. Alcohol, it will end in anal. And for the carboxylic acid, it will end in anoic. All right? So our organic chemistry compounds, in naming them, we say it has two parts. The second part tells us the whole molecular series. That means once you hear the compound ending in, you know it's an alkene. If you hear in, it's an alkene. If you hear anal, it's an alcohol. And if you hear anoic acid, it's a carboxylic acid. All right. Now the first part of the name tells us the amount of carbon atoms. So let us just run through it quickly. If you have one carbon atom, the prefix is meth. Two carbon atom, eth. Three carbon atoms, pro. Four carbon atoms, it's built, right? Five carbon atoms, it's pent. Six, X, seven is hept, and eight is up, right? So remember the names, if you have an alkane with three carbon atoms, what would be the name? Of it, anybody? Propane. Propane. So once it's, once it has three carbons, we know the first part of the name is pro. And if it is an alkane, we know that it should end in a. If you have an alkene with six carbons, what would be the name of that alkene? Hexene. Hexene. Right. Because once it's six. It must start with X. And if it's an alkene, it must end in E, so it's Xene. If you have an alcohol with two carbons, what would be the name of it? Ethanol. Ethanol. Right, because two carbons prefix is Eth. And if you have a carboxylic acid with one carbon atom, it would be called? Methanoic Methanoic. Right. So let me just put right, meth, right, it will be methanoic acid, that is correct, all right? So that is the general name, good? But the naming will get a little more advanced and I will do that shortly, all right? But this is how we come up with the name. Any amount of carbon, so just two of these, right? One carbon meth, two carbon meth. It's important that you know them, all right? So we know how to name each of these compounds, alkene, alkene, alcohol, and carboxylic acid. Very simple. Alkenes end in ane, alkenes end in ene, alcohols end in anal, carboxylic acid ends in anoic, right? And then these now is just the amount of carbon atoms. All right, so once you study these, you will know how to name them. All right, what I want to do now is show you now how to draw the tree. So we have three types of formula, right? Condensed, structural, and molecular formula. So we're going to focus now on drawing the, di the different structures. So the molecular formula that's the easy one, right? So for example, C4 H10. So all the molecular formula does it let us know how many of each atom is present in the compound. So C4 H10, all it does is tell us that we have four carbons 
and 10 hydrogens. But the displayed formula, displayed, and the next name for the displayed formula is the structural formula. And what this is going to do now is show us how the atoms are actually connected to each other in the compound, all right? So C4H10, so first, is this an alkene or an alkane? Use the general formula. So alkane is CN, H2N two N plus two. Alkene is CN, H2N. Two N. So is it an alkene or an alkene? Alkene. That is correct. Uh, C4, H, two times four plus two. Two four is eight, eight and two is 10. So for an alkane, if it has four carbons, it must have 10 hydrogen. If it was an alkene, how many hydrogens would it have? If it, eight, eight. That is correct, all right. So we are going to draw the structure of an alkene. Now before we start drawing, right, let's look up at the carbon atom. The atomic number for carbon is six. So if the atomic number is six, what is the electronic configuration for carbon? Four, two, four. Mm -hmm. two, four. That is correct. I will know that carbon is a non-metal, right? So two, four. Now for carbon, it will want its valence shell to be filled, right? Now the second shell, what's the maximum amount of electron that the second shell can hold? Right. So that means if carbon wants to have a full valence shell, it will need to gain how many electrons? Four. 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 That is correct. All right. And when we did covalent bonding, we know that to get an electron, the car the atom must to get an electron, it must share if we're doing covalent bonding. So let me just quickly revise that, right? So if you have a carbon atom, I'm just drawing the valence shell. All right, so we know the valence shell, it has four electrons, all right? Let me use hydrogen as the example, all right? We know that hydrogen only has one electron. If it's covalent bonding, they are sharing electrons. So I'm just doing this to highlight sharing. So for carbon, if it wants to get an electron, it must form a bond, right? So each time it gets an electron, it has to form a bond. So if it wants to gain four electrons, how many bonds will it form? Four. Four. Sorry. Right. Well, can carbon form any more bonds? Look at its valence shell. Does it have any more electrons? Yes, sir. Right. But that's not the only reason. It's not because it chose up before. Remember, it already has four, right? So if it gains four more, how much it have now? Eight. Right, so the new electronic configuration would have been two eight, right? Yes, sir. And what's the maximum amount of electron that the second shell can hold? Eight. eight. Exactly. So once it gets the once it reaches eight, it will not form any more bonds. So the reason why I'm telling you this, right? You must remember from this. How many bonds will carbon form? Four. Right. 
always remember that. So carbon forms four bond. It has four electrons on its valence shell. So to get four more, it has to form four bonds. All right. So it has a valency of four. All right. So it is going to form four bonds. All right. So remember that not one, not two. Always put four bonds around carbon, around the carbon atom. All right. So let's get to that now. And again, remember, you can stop and ask if you have any question. I can stop and ask, not a problem. So carbon, when you have the molecular formula, right? And you are going to draw the displayed formula. Ignore the hydrogens, right? Let's pay attention to the carbon atoms first. The carbon atoms, they are going to be connected to each other. All right. So the carbon atoms, they are going to be connected to each other by a single line. All right. That's the first thing to do for the display formula. Remember, these lines are what? What are these lines? Single bond. Right. They are single bonds. Now, how many bonds did we say carbon? must form four. Four. four right so at the moment each this carbon atom here how many bond is this one forming one one so that means it needs three more so you're going to put a line above a line below and a line to the left now how many bonds does this carbon have? Four. Right. How many bond does this carbon have? Two. And four. Yeah, you're right. so how much more you need? Two. Two. Right. One above, one below. Same thing here. One above, one below. How many does this carbon need? Three. Right. One above, one below, one to the right. Now, once you finish this, you will put hydrogen at the end of every line. So at the end of the lines, you put your hydrogen. All right. And so this is the molecular formula. This is the displayed formula. Everybody good? Any question? No, sir. All right. No. So let's draw the condensed formula now. All right. So we have the molecular formula, the displayed formula, and the condensed formula. The condensed formula, it's kind of similar to the displayed formula, right? where it shows the arrangement of the atoms. However, we cannot put any bond lines in the condensed formula. So the condensed formula is like a shortened version of the displayed formula. So to do it correctly, right? What I want you to do, just, you can do two things. You can just erase the bond, right? Well, you would have drawn it. You can put a line in front. All right? Just draw a line. Now on the exam, if you read, well, you wouldn't need to do this for the exam because you would have practiced. But if you forget, just draw a line in front of each carbon with a pencil because you would have to erase it afterwards. So just draw a line in front of each carbon. This line here, is representing a barrier, right? So for the condensed formula, we are going to start with the carbon atom, not the hydrogens, all right? So we always start with a carbon atom. So the first carbon atom, right? Now, if this 
line here is representing our barrier, right? That means we're ignoring everything in front of the carbon. What is attached to this carbon? Three hydrogens. Three hydrogens, right? So you're going to write pH three. So it is a carbon with one, two, three hydrogens. So you write CH3. That is why I said you're basically writing this without the bond lines. All right? So we just write H3. Now you move from this carbon to the next one. Remember now, we have a line behind of it and a line in front of it. So we are not looking at anything behind it or in front of it. So what is attached to this carbon? Two hydrogens. So it is CH2. What is attached to this carbon? Two hydrogens. And what is attached to this carbon? Three hydrogens. So this is the condensed formula. All right, so the molecular formula, it is just showing the amount of each atom present. The displayed formula, it is actually showing how the atoms are arranged, including the bonds. All right, and then the condensed formula now, it's same thing, showing the arrangement, but without using the bond lines. So this carbon, it has three hydrogens, attached to it. So if I gave you this condensed formula and ask you to do this, right? You will start here, this carbon, right? And it has three hydrogens attached. Also, remember carbon form, how many bonds? Four. Right. Four. Yes, and we know that the carbon atoms must be connected to each other. Right? So this carbon, CH3. So if this carbon is bonded to three hydrogen, that is three bonds. So the next bond means it would have to be with this carbon. So if you make a condensed formula and you want to do this, you draw the carbon first and you draw the next carbon. Right? So you draw the two carbon atoms. Right? And that is a bond. These three hydrogen atoms must go on this carbon. And so you put them on. These two hydrogen atoms must be on this carbon. Put one above and one below because this carbon must be connected to this one. All right? And that is how you will continue until you get to the end. All right? Now, what is the name of this compound? It has four Mutant. carbons, right? So four carbons. So we know the prefix is but, and this is an alkane, so it must end in a. All right. So I want you to try one for me. I want you to try C five H twelve. Draw the displayed formula and the condensed formula. I'm going to give you two minutes. There about to try it, and then I write it on the board. So do the displayed formula and the condense for C5, H12.
Finish, All right, let's give the others a little more time. All right, so the person that said they were finished, tell me what to draw. What is it, sir? Someone said they were finished, or what they tell me what they had. Sir? Mm -hmm. You're going to have five carbons. All right. One, two, three, four. Five carbons, yes. And what should I do next? So for the first carbon, mm -hmm. we need three hydrogen. All right, so let's put on the bonds first. All right. So three hydrogens on this one. All right. On top of this one. Two, two hydrogens. All right. One above, one below. And this one. Two again. Right. And this one. Two. And three hydrogen. And the last one. All right. Good. And how do we get the comments formula? So you go split, split it, the barriers between each. All right. So let's put in the barriers. All right. And we start out with which element? Carbon or hydrogen? Carbon. All right. So first carbon, right? And what is attached to the first carbon? Three hydrogen. All right, so CH3, and then CH2. Right, move to the second carbon with two hydrogens, then CH2. All right, and then CH2 again. All right, and then CH3. Then. Good job. Sir, are you could write CH3, CH3 bracket, CH3? That's exactly what I'm going to show you now. All right. So we have CH3 here, right? These groups right here, CH2, they repeat one after the other, right? CH2, CH2, CH2. So if you want, as Nadine just pointed out, you right, CH3, right? Now we have CH3 here and CH3 way out here. We cannot group the two of them together, as in we cannot put them in our bucket because they did not come one after the other. But these three, they came one after the other. They were consecutive, right? So you can write one of the CH2 groups, put it inside a bracket, right? Now, how many CH2 groups do we have here? Three, four, three. Right. So you write the CH2, put it inside a bracket, and then you would write how much of it we have. So if you notice, we have one, two, three CH2 groups. So you can put the CH2 inside the bracket, and the number outside tells how much of this group is present in the compound. All right? And then now, to end it off, 
we put back CH3. Both of these condensed formula are correct. So whichever you prefer, all right? You can do either of them. Good. Both are correct. All right, so that is how we do the formula. Now let's name our, some alkanes now. So I'm going to show you how to name alkanes, all right? Not just about propane and pentane, all right? All right, so let's start with a simple one. Three carbons with just hydrogens, all right? So if you get a compound to name, right? And it just consists of carbon and hydrogen. We clearly see that this compound only consists of carbon to carbon single bond, so it's an alkane. So if we're naming it, how should the name end? Propane. So three carbons. So we know the prefix for three carbon is pro. And it's an alkane. So we know it is propane, all right? So this one is straight forward. Let's go again. All right. What is the difference between this compound and this compound? Sir, chlorine. Right. This compound has a chlorine present, right? So sometimes your alkane, one of the hydrogens will be re replaced by a next atom, right? And we call them substituent groups. Substituent groups, right? So these are groups that substitute a hydrogen in your alkene. And for CSEC, we will just use Cl, Br, hold on, just a second. So we will use Cl, Br, and CH3, all right? Now, Cl, we are not going to call it chlorine. We are going to Chlor call it chloro. Br, we are going to call it bromo. And CH3 is called methyl. Just for education purposes, if it was I, it would be iodo. If it was F, it would be fluoro. All right? But CSEC, you must often say chlorobromo or methyl. But if it was an I, I is for iodine, so we say iodo, chlorobromo, and chloro. So we are looking at the halogens, right? Except for a methyl group. So let's go back here now. Just as before, you are going to look how many carbon atoms that you have. And that will tell you the alkane. So we see one, two, three carbon atoms. So which alkane is that? Propane. Right. So you will name it just as a name before as propane. However, we have something other than hydrogen on it now, right? Yes, sir. Right. We have chloro, right. So it's not just propane, it is now chloropropane, right? Uh, give me just a second. Sir, what about the position? Yeah, man, I'm going to, to do that now. Just a second. 
All right, so these are representing the carbon atoms. Each of these black balls are representing the carbon atoms, right? And the blue one is re representing the chlorine atom. All right. So if I want to click this, right, the chlorine atom, which carbon atom is it attached to? First one. The first one. The first one. All right. If I do this, which carbon atom is it attached to? The last one. The first one. The third one. All right. So the reason why I'm doing this, right? You start counting from the end that is closest to your substituent group. You always count from the end closest to the substituent group. So in the name, right, even though we say chloropropane, we have to tell which carbon atom the chlorine is on. Now we have three carbon atoms, right? That means one of them has to be carbon one, one has to be carbon two, and one has to be carbon three. So first I held it like this, and you said it was attached to carbon one. And then I did this, and something it was attached to carbon three. All right. So when I have it like this, it means you start. You were counting from this end. When I set it like this, you were still counting from this end. You should not do that. You always count from the end that is closest to your substituent group. So you will count from the end that this is closest to. So in this case, if the molecule is like this, the chlorine is still attached to which carbon atom? Carbon one. one. Exactly. And if it's like this, which carbon is it attached to? Carbon one. And if it is like this, which carbon is it attached to? Carbon one. one. If it is like this, which carbon is it attached to? Carbon one. Carbon one. Because I always start counting from the end that this is closest to. So when you have it like this, right? You can count from this end, one, two, three. So if you count from this end, this is carbon one, this is carbon two, and this is carbon three. But if you were counting from, all right, so this is the, this is the left side, all right, and this is the right side. So counting from the left to right, you will get one chloropropane. But if you started counting from this end, this carbon three, it would become carbon one. Carbon three, it will become carbon one. Carbon two, it will stay as carbon two. And this carbon one will become carbon three. So one chloropropane is when you count from left to right. If we count it from this direction, from right to left, we would end up with three chloropropane. All right, so this one is when we come from right to left. So when you get the compound and they're trying to name it, you come in both directions. And then you see which direction gives the substituent the lowest number, all right? So counting from this end, this is carbon one. So the chloro group is attached to carbon one. That is why it is one chloro. And I always put a dash between the number and the word, all right? If you had started counting from this end, this would be carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, all right? Any question? Are we good? Good. All right. 
So the current name is 1-chloropropane. I'm going to erase it and we do the next one. Now let me just, uh, just to make the point very, very clear, what would be the name of this compound? 1-chloropropane. That is correct. So this up here, it is still 1-chloropropane because you always start counting from the end that gives this group the lowest number. If you have started here, it would have been one, two, three. So the chloral group would have been attached to the third carbon if you had counted in this manner, all right? So that is why we have to count from this end because the rule, it's a rule, you know, so you will always count from the end of the compound that gives our substituent group the lowest number possible. All right? So that is how we get one chloropropane. Let's try the next one. I'm going to draw it over here. All right, so again, the first thing you should do, look how many carbon atoms that you have present. So how many carbon atom is present? Four. four. And if it's four, what is the name of the alkane? Butane. All right, that is correct. So let us work it again. So this time we have four carbon atoms, right? All right, so which end would we come from? Left. Left. Right. So, counting from here, one, two. So, the substituent group, counting from here, the substituent group is on carbon two. If we had counted from this direction, it would have been one, two, three. So we know we should not come from this direction. We must come from this one. All right? So, right, it is butane. Is it just butane? What is it now? That is correct. So it is two dash bromo butane. Good job. Alright. Let's work on the next one. I'm going to take you through all of the rules, right? So the so the first important rule here is that when you have a substituent, you always count from the end that is closest to your substituent group. So we start counting from this carbon because it is, this is closer to it. In this one, we started counting from this carbon. All right, let's try some more.
right? Again, what's the first thing that we should do in naming the compound? Identify how much carbon. Right, and how much we have? Four. Four. So it is, again, it is, should be called? Butane. All right. And what should you do after that now? What are we going to look for? Um, the substituent substitute. Right. <laughs> substituent group, right. So look if there is anything other than hydrogen. All right. And here we see we have two BR groups, right? So what is what are we going to add on to butane? Yeah, bromo. Bromo. Right. bromo, good. No, and next rule now, right? Let's see, because we have two of the same substituent, whenever that happens, we're going to use a prefix. All right? When you have two or more of the same substituent, we use a prefix. So if you have two of the same substituent, use the prefix. Di. If you have three, you use chai, and if it's four, it is tetra. So in this case, we have two bromo groups, right? So what would we say? Di. Di. So you won't say bromo butane, it will be di bromo butane. Di, because we have two bromo groups. Good. Now, where are the two bromo I'm going to shift it from here. One, two. I'm going to shift it for a specific reason. All right, where are the two bromo groups? Two, two. All right, both of them are on carbon two, right? Yes. Now, some students tend to come. Come at two. Right, but some students, they will make the mistake because both of them are on the same carbon atoms, they will just put two dash dibromobutane. But you must always give the position for every substituent group. So you will have to say two, two dibromobutane. When you have two numbers following each other, you separate it with a comma. So it is two, comma, two, Diagroma butane. All right. We can put back the bromo group here, too. All right. If I put back this here, what would be the name now? One, two, one, two, two, two. two tri bromo butane. Right. Because tri. Because tri is when we have three, right? Right. So one of them is on carbon one. This one is on carbon two, this one is also on carbon two. So the important point to note here, and remember, if you have substituents on the same carbon atom, still put the positions for each of them. So you must say two, two, don't just say two, all right? That's what I wanted. And the last one now, so when you have one more rule, All right, how many carbons do we have here? Five. All right, five. so five is? Twenty. Twenty. Right. All right, now how many substituent groups do we have? Two. Two. Bromo and chloro. All right, if we start counting from this end, right? Bromo is on carbon, so one, two, Three, four, five. So if we're counting from the left hand side over to the right, 
One is on carbon two and one is on carbon five. So two and five, that is a total of seven, All right? Now, if we count from this end, this would become carbon one. This will become carbon two, three, four, five. So the chloro group would be on carbon one, and the bromo group would be on carbon four. Now one and four is five. So we say when you have more than one substituent, you add up the position of each of them, right? Counting in a, the particular direction. So counting from left to right, bromo is on carbon two, Cl is on carbon five. If you add that up, you get seven. However, if you're starting from here, this is the first carbon, so chlorine is on the first carbon. And this will be the fourth carbon, so one and four is five. So which direction would give you the lower number? Right to left. Right. Right to left, correct. That means we are going to come from right to left, all right? So we can erase these numbers that represented left to right. So now tell me what I should write. One chloro. All right. So the rule is when you have two different substituent, you must list them in alphabetical order. So if we're listing it in alphabetical order, bromo comes before chloro in the alphabet. So B before C. Before bromo. So it would be four bromo. One, one chloro. One chloro pentane, right? Remember, you always put a, a dash between the number and the word, all right? So I'm going to put three examples on the board and I try it. I'm going to look for a possible question that asks you to name a compound, all right? And then we'll close for today. Next week, we're going to do isomers and reaction of alkanes and work some questions involving those, all right? So I'm going to put three compounds on the board for you to name now. That's the first one. So I want you to name this, name these two, and then draw this one. All right. Let me look at this thing.
And let's give them a minute or so. All right, Cameron, what's number one? Sir, um, I got to die, Roma. Can you repeat that? One, two, die, Roma. All right, one, two, die, Roma. Okay. Anybody disagree with this answer? Or you agree? Agree. All right. So one, two, three carbon, that makes it propane. All right. We have two bromo substituent. So we know when you have two or more of the same substituent, we should use a prefix. And because it's two of them, we use the prefix. Di, so it is di bromo, and we know that we should come from the end that gives the substituent the lowest number. So counting from this end, it's one, two. If you had started out here, it would have been one, two, three. So it would have been two, three. So we know that one, two will give a lower number than two, three. So this is correct. Someone else, what is the name of this one? One, two, dichloroethane. Right, one, two. One, two, dichloroethane. What will be this one? What would be the name of this one? Sir, Tetra. Tetra. Um, Miko? Yes. Mm. All right, let's follow the rule. How many carbons is it? One. 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 It is? Methane. 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 Which substituent group is present? Chloro. Chloro. How many chloro is present? Four. Four. Four, we should say what? Tetra. No, how many carbon is there again? How many carbon is present? One. So one. So one carbon. Do we need to put any number? No, no, sir. Right. So it is just tetra chloro methane because it is just one carbon. That means then they have to be attached to the one carbon. All right. How did you draw this now? So three bromo, two chlorobutane. How many carbon atoms should be present in this compound? Four. 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 So let me draw the four. Now, let's say we are counting from, all right, which end you come from? Based Left. on your choice. Yes. All right, yeah, so right. This, this, over here is where I come from? Or here? Yes. This, all right. Yes, so, sir. All right, so this is carbon one, this is carbon two. So you put the chlorine on this one, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. So, out of space. So, put the chlorine in this. All right, let me just do it up here. Okay. 
So four carbons, one, two, three, four. I start counting from here, so this is carbon two with the chlorine. That means this would be carbon three. Now, you see, when you're given the name and you're joining the compound, you can choose which direction to count from, all right? So you can choose to start going from here or here because your journey, it, you have the option where you want to come from, all right? So the person chose here. So this is carbon one, carbon two, and carbon three. And so what should we do after that? Sir, put the first one has three hydrogen. Right. The second one and third one have one hydrogen. Mm -hmm. And then the last one have three also. Right. Good job. All right, so we haven't done enough question to really work any first paper, but there's, there's a simple one here. All right, so compound A, compound B. So the question is, and this is from 2015, name the whole molecular series to which compound A and B belong. Let me just add the next one. This is not on the paper, but I'm just going to add it as revision. So name the whole molecular series to which compound A, B, and C belong. Alkane, alkene, and alcohol, and alcohol. Yes. All right, so for alkane, you notice in this one, the carbon atoms, we only have carbon, carbon, single bonds. So you are correct. A is the alkene. When we look at compound B, we see even though it has a single one, we notice it has what? A carbon to carbon. Right. So once, right. once you spot it, then it becomes an alkene. And this one becomes an alcohol. Alcohol. Right. alcohol. This is an alcohol. All right. No, for this compound, when I do isomers next week, we are going to look at how to name branched alkenes, right? So if you look at this one here, we have the carbon atoms going across, and we have one going up as well. You see this one up here? Remember, when I listed the substituent groups apart from apart from bromo, chloro, um, chanel, mutamic. Chanel, yeah, all right. Right, so remember, apart from bromo, chloro, fluoro, and iodo, I had also written written CH3, right? So this carbon, it has three hydrogens, right? So I'm going to explain this in more detail next week. 
But this CH3 group here, it's just like how you would have Br or Cl. So you would still count one, two, three, four, right? In which case, that would be called what? Butane. Butane, right? So it would be butane. And CH3, it is called what? And it is on which carbon? Good. No. We see a CH3 group here and we call it methyl. I'm sure now this is also a CH3, but it is not called methyl. That's because this CH3 group, it's a part of our carbon chain, right? So anything in it, it is not a substituent, right? It is not attached to it. So remember, when we add like, even this one here, let me switch this with a BR, right? You notice the BR, it is not a part of our carbon chain, right? So the carbons one, two, three, they are not connected in this way, right? It is attached to it. Cool. But next week, I'm going to go in more detail as to how to name the branched alkenes, all right? So, yeah, I think I'm going to stop it here for this week. So next week, I want to show you how to name alkenes. We're going to do isomers and reaction of alkenes. And by that time, we can start to work possibles little by little, all right? But just ensure that they keep practicing. It's very important for our organic chemistry. You have to practice. It starts out simple, but as we add on more stuff, it, and if you're not studying, it will seem more difficult. Now, I already have a video up for isomers and reactions of alkenes. So you can watch it in the meantime, all right? Let me put back the channel name. So if you want to watch it in the meantime, so when we come next week, if you have any question, you can ask, all right? And remember, this is recorded. I'm going to post it later tonight. All right, so that's it, all right? So I'm going to stop here for tonight. Let me stop there. Mm -hmm.